This is a Motorola car radio and several months ago I was asked to explain how the electrical mechanical vibrator circuit produces the B plus for the tubes. Well recently I got a, another question about this circuit and it has to do with these electrolytic capacitors. In the show more of this video you'll find a link to this wiring diagram. I went ahead and redrew it to make things a little bit clearer. And here's the question. They wanted to know what is the polarity of this electrolytic capacitor. Well what I do is I go to what I know for sure in electronics and we can start in several places but let's start at the audio output tube at the top. For that tube to work the plate has got to be positive and if we follow that lead down to the audio transformer on the other side of the transformer we end up at our B plus which turns out to be the most B plus in this circuit or the highest B plus in this circuit. Here is the Pi filter for the B plus and that means of course that this side of the plate of the bottom two electrolytic capacitors are plus. The other side of those electrolytic capacitors goes to the center tap and that is the most negative in this power supply circuit. You'll notice that the center tap, the most negative part in the power supply, does not go to ground. Well that also means that those electrolytic capacitors are not grounded to the chassis so that means that those electrolytic capacitors are isolated from the chassis. Let's take a look at that audio output tube. You'll notice that the cathode is grounded to the chassis. Let's see if we can figure out how the electrons get there. Let's go back to the center tap, the most negative part of the power supply, and electrons will flow from negative to positive. When we get to this point, if we take a right turn, we go through a resistor and we end up on the control grid. Well, that's not very much current, so let's take a left and see where we go. We go through two resistors to chassis ground. So this is how the electrons get to the grounded cathode of the audio output tube. Looking back at this diagram you'll notice that four tubes in total have the cathode going directly to chassis ground so that means the electron supply for those four tubes go through resistors 32 and 30. Now that we know a little more about this circuit let's get back to this electrolytic capacitor. I'm going to remove this particular electrolytic capacitor and put it in the circuit electrically the same but in a different place. I think it'll be easier to understand and that is right here. I also put in a voltmeter the black lead goes to the most negative part of this power supply and the red lead goes to chassis ground and what you would find out is the ground measured from the most negative part in the power supply chassis ground is positive so that means that we could mark the capacitor 
like this and now we can put it back the way it was originally with the sign that chassis ground is positive. This drawing is in my free ebook, which I'll have a link to it in the show more of this video. Here's another power supply that has both positive and negative outputs. This power supply's electrolytic capacitors are also isolated from the chassis. Here's another example of a power supply that has both positive and negative outputs, but this time you'll notice that the chassis ground is positive, C3. But if you go up to R3, R4, and R5, if you were to measure from ground there, in between the ground and in between R3 and R4, you have a positive reading. So that means that the ground is negative. Now, this seems impossible, but it isn't. I have uh, redrawn this, and it's not in the book, but I thought I'd redraw just the resistor parts. Resistor R1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and I think this will make a lot more sense to you. Right here it is. In other words, we have negative attached to the left side of R1 and positive attached to the right side of R5. And between R2 and R3, we have our chassis ground. So if we measure to the left, we will be measuring negative voltage. And if we measure to the right, we will measure positive voltages. I hope this video helped you understand how to figure out the polarity of electrolytic capacitors using just the wiring diagram. Thanks for watching.